Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Abbey. There's another map review because you guys really enjoyed the last one. And I should say a big thank you to all of you who offered your support for the last map review. It's encouraged me to do another, and so here we are on Abbey, a map that is insanely heavily dominated by the middle of the map. And why shouldn't it be the middle of this map is the highest land, as I always tell people. Take high land. High land is good. High land is important. If you're on a new map and you have no idea what to do, take high land. You have the best chance of outplaying your enemy. Fortunately, we have a map, 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 a map that I am very, very familiar with. And throughout this review, we're going to cover what you're going to do in all sorts of different tanks. Every single class of vehicle. We'll talk about what you should do on Abbey, and we'll we'll come to terms with just how important the middle of this map is for almost every single class of vehicle so let us delve into abbey and we'll start off with the light tanks and we'll talk about what light tanks might do from the southern base so now the middle as we know is insanely heavily contested uh, by both sides generally and it should be it's a very versatile adaptable and important position to take on the map the mediums want to take it, the, the, the lights want to take it, the tank destroyers want to defend it, and the heavies want to avoid it. it. It is a position that affects every single class of vehicle, whether they'd like to admit it or not. Now, when you log in, when you get into a battle in your light tanks, what you've really got to consider is how durable am I in this matchup? Are there Object 140s? Are there T-54s? What is going to go to the middle? You've got to make that judgement call. You've really got to know what's going to be here before it is, especially in your light tanks. That applies in your mediums as well. And I want to say this, that what, what, a lot of what I'm about to cover for light tank gameplay can be adapted to medium tank play as well because the middle appeals to both units. And to be honest, this map doesn't really have a scout meta, it doesn't have a scout position. The way you should play scouts on this map is, is kind of the same way you should play on a city map. Because Abbey, although it may not seem like it, it has qualities that make it very like a city map. And you might look at this map and think, what the hell are you on about? What I'm talking about is, Abbey is a very linear map. When you really think, think about it, you've got the 8-9 line, right? People push, push down that. You've got the middle, and you've got the one-two line. There's a lot of this map that is not traversed, that is not used. That's very similar to city maps, generally. And on city maps, what do you do in your light tanks? You're patient. You wait until the opportunity. It's very like what you've got to do with Abbey. You've got to be very careful about how aggressively you play in this map. However, there is a position that... You can use, okay, so lights, probably a safer position for you to use if you are keen on making an influence in the middle and you're not confident in your team's ability to take it. Not a great amount of people know that with a, bit, with a bit of speed and with the help of the new physics, you should be able to ramp your way straight up this location. And what that does for you is it allows you to get behind here. Now, you may think this is a useless position. It's not so much. For example, I'm proxy spotting Peabody. And should there be TDs in my base in that bush, which more than likely there will be because loads of people like to camp in here, there, Peabody is instantly going to come under fire and Peabody cannot turn far to my position. The RT can't turn far to my position. This is an area where, in a small sneaky tank like a like, you can have a big impact in the game by putting in sneaky shots, by coming into here, by you can get shots over this area and then fall back whenever you like. You can be very, very sneaky in this location and create... You can be an annoyance at the early stages of the game for the enemy lights and mediums that take the middle, which is more than you would be doing anywhere else because this map adheres to such linear engagements. Now, there's something you can also do as well which has very limited use. You can hop your way up here. What you want to use this for, I don't really know. I mean, hell, it, it looks cool and oh, balls. Balls! Balls! No, I'm good! I'm good. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, don't do that. But in a small tank, you can go up the stairs and you can look cool. Okay, so right now I'm gonna I'm gonna cover this under lights, but it's more appropriate to be used in mediums. Now, not a lot of people know about this maneuver or the tactic, if you want to call it that. The middle is all too. Uh, when you log into Abbey in your top tier medium tank, you just think middle, take it, done. And no one thinks about the other options that the middle of the map offers, because further further west of the middle, you see the lower part of the Abbey here, is rarely used because generally it's useless. But you can make use out of it by doing such maneuvers as this. Let's say you're in your top tier medium tank. You are very top tier. You're in a T-54, an incredibly powerful medium tank top tier. Instead of going to the middle, because there's a Sense 7 one and, a, and an ISU in a platoon. The Sense 7 one's going to spot and put a shot out with his 105 from there. The, the, the ISU is sat in that bush. She's going to shoot you as you advance. You don't want to take that damage. What you can do is move into the middle, move through this line of bushes, and now there is a three, there are three options for you here to get into the position that takes advantage of an unexpected maneuver. And these are the three maneuvers. You've got option one, which is this top node here. Option one means that you are likely to get spotted by anything taking the middle of the map here. If you stop in this location and fire, it is quite dangerous because people might come up there. You want to keep this building between you and that location. Also, if the enemy Archie is in play, you want to consider that as well. But you can use this location to harass guys in the middle. However, that is not your objective. Your objective by moving from the, from the west of the middle here is to come all the way over to this location and oh i've gone one step too high you want to drop down over this land so you don't expose yourself and go up to this location right here now this may seem odd and it is you don't catch a lot of people doing it because basically you only want to do want to do it when you're chopped here you're going to worm your way all the way out to here so you get cover from the enemy arty and the enemy tds and what you can do from this position is dig out anyone behind the abbey. People like to go up there and spot the targets in the middle. You can dig out anyone who's trying to use their tank armor on the winch line that leads up to the abbey. And you can use this position to harass and spot any of the TDs that are camping behind that lighthouse or, or whatever the hell that structure is there. This is an odd position, but one that's very useful if you use it right. Let's look at the other two options to get here, because you really do want to consider them and adapt, because they are not going to be all... Option one is not going to be a point when you're not top tier. I would suggest only if you're in a top tier powerful medium tank like a T-54 to use this high land to get to that location. If you are perhaps not top tier, but still in a strong medium tank, then I recommend coming through this, this land right here. And you go past this house perhaps and drop here instead of dropping advanced there. That way you're not going to incur flanking fire from the people here because you get down earlier and you have this winch line covering you from the guys in the middle. Offers you a bit more protection and if you're a good enough driver you can worm your way through there and get up here a lot more safely. But that is more defensive, it doesn't allow you to return fire to whoever's in the middle, which is a useful thing when you're in the top two media. Now option three, I would suggest this if you want to aggressively scout. Now this is dangerous, I don't recommend it in any game, it's, it will get you killed in a lot of games, however, if you are in a light tank and you want to you wanna go for glory, then come out over this open land, hug the water. Hug the water here and you will probably remain unspotted as you move through this land here. And you can actually sneak into the bushes at that location on the end there without getting spotted by anyone at all as you make this entire maneuver. And you go up here. You may get spotted at this location by people there, but by that time you're only going to have the speed to utterly fail at getting out this map. You're only going to have the speed to get into this location without incurring massive damage. And behind this house can actually be a very useful position to just harass and be annoying. 
going wang about the arty, but this gives you a good foothold because the enemy have to make quite an effort to dig you out from here. And of course, you can just run away back the same way you came if you so desire as well. And if your team own the middle, let's put it like this. If you're on a light tank and you, you see that you've got a superior medium tank force, you see that you've got two T-54s, the enemy have got a sense 7 one You are going to win the middle. Uh, that's pretty much flat out what's going to happen. So you move into this position early and you bait. You say, hey, enemy team, come kill me. And then as they do that, you move over this land here. And now as soon as you get into this position, the enemy have to commit so much to kill you over that open land. And as soon as you get land here, you've got fire support. Wait, am I talking out my ass on it here? Those buildings weren't there. I swear those buildings have moved. What the hell? I... Where the hell did I get fire support from when I did this? <laughs> okay, here. Here it was, I believe. No? Okay, you know what? Don't bait. This is a dumb position to bait unless you're in a platoon with support. <laughs> you can go there and spot dump the line support from the middle. I, I, I never knew. I honestly thought you could get support from the middle, but still an interesting position to work nonetheless. Now let's look at the implications of the Abbey. As we know, I'm covering lights and mediums at the same time from here. Still looking at what you can do from the southern base here. So you attack on the southern base. One thing you want to ensure that you do is you don't do what Peabody's doing. You don't drive in the middle of the land here. Now, tanks with good gun depression, the Sent 7 1 with that 40 km an hour top speed, are not going to be able to get the middle in the majority of circumstances. So, what I recommend you do in those tanks is use the range line here. That's if there's no RT. If there is RT, I recommend you moving up to this location right here as early as you can to get cover from the enemy RT. Most enemy RT cannot hit you here, and you can still put out fire on the guys advancing to the middle. One thing you should be aware of. If the enemy have taken the middle and they are attacking aggressively up the eastern flank, you can inf incur lots of flanking fire from here. If you're in a tank as big as a sense of one, they're going to have easy shots at your hull armor. So use this position for what, what it's good for, getting shots into the guys in the middle, and then vacate it before the enemy attack down the east one. So, what I was saying about taking the middle, you are going to incur fire from TDs, the RT is going to be pinned as well. So make sure you are hugging as close to this wall as you can while advancing. It cuts off shots from the enemy's tank destroyers. They have to shoot through these bushes and through those walls occasionally. So make sure you're trying to get as close to this land as possible. That applies on the other side as well. Now what you want to do when attacking from the north into the middle is drive through these walls if you want to go into the middle fight anyway. Drive through these walls and ensure that you knock them all down. It's going to tell the enemy RT where you are, but most likely the enemy RT knows where you are anyway. This means that you will not incur fire from the enemy TDs because they're going to be in that position right there. And see which bush is it? It's that bush. And so by moving up in the cover of these walls, you actually cannot get shot by the enemy TDs. So make sure to knock all the walls down. Every single feckin' wall, knock it down when you're moving from the north. It will keep you safe from TD fire as you approach the middle. Okay, so let's talk about the Abbey itself and the implications for gameplay. Now, when you get into the middle, you are most likely going to, going to be spotted. Whatever happens, do not move over this open land instantly. There will be TDs in base. Most likely they'll be pre-aimed and they'll get a shot at you as you come over this open land in an attempt to get to the side here. What you need to do after you get spotted by the guys working the winch line in the middle, you come into the middle right here and you sit here. You wait here for however long you think it's going to take you to get unspotted, for the enemy TDs to lose interest. And then when they have, you've got two options. You either move onto that land there, that is a very aggressive location if you're spawning from the north, and a defensive location if you're spawning from the south. But what most people do, and what I might recommend, is to move to this land here. Now we'll talk about how help how helpful how helpful this land is in a moment, but first we'll talk about the balcony. 
The balcony is a position that I've used countless times to outplay the enemy, and you can use it in pretty much any class of tank. Any class that is capable of getting to the middle. Do excuse me, I've got to change the music tracks because I'm worried about coffee night. Dun dun. <laughs> that was a random music track. That wasn't a sound effect. I have random sound effects on my iTunes. Okay, so this is the balcony. Welcome, gentlemen. This position is overpowered. It is ridiculous. Uh, tank like a T-54 of Jet 140. You get hold down here. You'll spot people advancing from the eastern flank. And this is why when I cover the eastern flank here, I'm going to make it very clear that you should not push all the way down to the edge if you know that the enemy still have tanks in base. Because that area is going to get you shot from any smart players in the middle here who go hold down. This position can also be used to defend base very, very adequately. And I do be believe they removed some cover from this location that they used to be, but you can certainly easily get shots out while being held down here. And, if you're lucky, you can actually reverse up far enough to use this bush. See, the bush is opaque now. I can shoot through that at targets in the base without being spotted. You want to be careful how far you go with that, though, because bushes on Abbey are never that reliable. See, Peabody is just chilling there, and I can open fire. So... A very, very useful position if you've got the skill to anticipate when the enemy will be attacking the southern base. Balcony position, great for defending the southern base against assaults. Also, there is a northern balcony, uh, a, t a position that the you can use for attacking the enemy base or defending it. Now, attacking is going to be difficult because then will most likely be TDs and it's not a good position to use when the enemy TDs are still garrisoned in position. However, when your team is mounting an offensive on the northern base, it's good to have a supporting unit here in the middle to put out harassing fire to the guys as they fall back while they're pressured from the eastern flank, or when they're caught out there and trying reversing to avoid getting killed at that corner at B8, B9. This, again, fantastic position to use to support or defend an assault on the northern base you also want to think about the fact that you can actually side snipe here but do be aware that spots are difficult here because of the bushes between you and the enemy you have to go to this position to spot now that can cause difficulties because if you come from this side and think oh god i can't see them and then come out here you are right in the middle of the open it's going to take you quite a while to get back in together so make sure if you are attempting to spot enemy tanks in your base like you come from this location to do it because you'll spot them about at this at this at this time and then you can instantly get into here which is a more defensive location where you can side snipe and put out hurricanes in fire and you don't have to worry about potentially getting spotted by some ridiculous rng through those bushes and taking incoming fire it's always best to take the safe option okay so those are the balconies now let us look at the third balcony, which is this one right here. Now, this balcony has the objective of supporting the eastern flank. Now, you can get shots on people falling back through there. It may not look like you can, but as people fall back or push back like that or run away down there, you can get shots in this location. It's also important to bear in mind that as the enemy assault down the... the uh, the eastern flank you can get supporting fire through these bushes right there you can shoot in the back anyone who attacks your team down that way if they're not careful and it's a fantastic position to use right here to support that eastern flank i've had massive games in the old patch chaffy in tier 10 games by being here and harassing them as they attack down the eastern flank so something to consider as well, the Abbey has influence over every single flank, the eastern flank, and as you can see from here, the western flank as well. Now, the engagement that happens on the western flank is something that you really have to consider, because you're going to take potential incoming fire from the people from these bushes here, and you want to think about, okay, is my team being aggressive on the western flank? 
am I gonna get shots on the guys here, or do I not have to worry about it? Are the guys on the on the western flank winning? If so, they're most likely gonna use these positions to harass the guys in the middle. And you probably wanna relocate to that balcony there to prepare for a, def a defensive assault. As we know, this balcony is fantastic for defending the southern base. You can use this position here to kill these guys in the lair of land, and you won't get sh shot by the guys on the flank there as well. So, keep an eye on the western flank when you're in the middle. It does influence the Abbey's engagement quite heavily into the middle and latter portions of the game. So do be sure to keep an eye on that as well, because you can both get damage and be damaged from there. Now, the one thing about the Abbey I haven't really covered yet is attacking from the northern spawn. And to be honest, you have far more options when attacking from the north because I wouldn't say the Abbey is unbalanced, but it's diverse. Um, you certainly have more options attacking from the, uh, from the north. So let's look at what you can do. Now, it all depends on how aggressive you want to be. If you're in a top tier medium, you just want to take the middle as, as quickly as you possibly can. Then, as I said, knock down every single wall, get into a firefight with the enemy mediums, get in here as quickly as possible. Now, this is the thing, at this point, you're unlikely to get shot from there. The enemy TDs have a very slim shot to make. So, I'd say, just rush into this location. If you're being attacked by the enemy medium, right here, rush. Do not make the engagement here if you're attacking from a northern base. If I'm with Peabody, and Peabody is an enemy medium tank who's attacking the southern base and he wants to attack me, I want to bring that engagement into the middle of the abbey. I want to have Peabody follow me, trying to kill me with all his might, and I want to make it as unfair as possible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come straight into the middle, right here, I'm going to whirl, I'm going to do a power slide, and I'm going to stop in the open. And I'm going to reverse, I'm going to go hold down, I'm going to invite him to come into the Abbey. I'm going to invite him to come into the line of fire of all of my tank destroyers that will be sitting in base, and Peabody is a dead man right now. I'm hold down, I can harass him, and the TDs are giving you incoming fire as well. So make sure that if you're attacking from the south, you do not take the Abbey instantly. Make sure if you're attacking from the south, you hide here for fear of incoming fire from the TDs. However, if you are attacking from the north, those TDs will be shooting to support you. So make sure you bring the engagement into the middle. Make sure you're using those spawns, those spawn locations and the map layout of Abbey to your best advantage. That is something to do as well. Now, I will, I will mention this because I have used it. It is risky, but it's hecka exciting, it's hecka fun. 4.30, T-54, aggressive, top tier medium tank. You've got a grand spanking matchup. There's not many TDs on the enemy team, this is something to consider as well. Then you can, from the northern base, come all the way out onto this balcony. Now this is dangerous. It is very, very dangerous. And what I would recommend is doing it in stages. Do not commit too early. Do not go around this corner. That just opens you up to fire from all the flanks. Make sure you hold back here. That way you can cut off one engagement until you know that it is safe. Work on the guys here. See if there's anyone shooting at you from there. Any incoming fire. This position right here, as long as you know that it's clear, is fantastic for that engagement right there. There will often be an engagement on that corner. If you can get to this position and hold yourself in cover, do be aware that people like to fall back there and get incoming fire to you. Hide yourself from the TDs, hide yourself from the enemy RG, and help your western flank to advance by shooting from those bushes there at the forces like that they've got pinned down. Even if you don't do a lot of damage, the fact that your incoming fire is there will ensure that those guys who are, who are camped on that corner fall back into a less effective location to defend and your team have a better chance of winning that western flank. So, more options for the northern spawn attacking the middle. There are sneaky maneuvers that you can do if you want to be a little more defensive and perhaps you, you were confident, but then you've seen how many forces are coming out in the middle. Hit a quick power slide, go straight in here. You can get fire onto enemy mediums by shooting from here. And most of the time I won't be able to shoot back because you're just going to run away and chill. 
is a useful position for getting a bit of supporting damage. You're not over committing, you're safe, you can get out mostly whenever you want to, and if you're in a small nimble tank, you can actually sneak your way into the abbey through this location as well. It is quite difficult though with new physics. So, the third and final thing from the Northern Spawn about attacking the Abbey, this is the most defensive play that you're probably going to see. Maybe you're in a bottom tier light tank, and there's loads of object ones for these uh, T-54s on the enemy team. So you're going to come up here, you're not even going to go to the middle energy, you're going to hit a hard left, and go up this way. Now, if you are careful and you tilt your tank up here, you can easily spot the guys in the middle while remaining relatively safe by ho hiding a lot of your tank. So you just go along here, and you will spot the guys in the middle, and hopefully your TDs will fire, your RT will fire as well. It's a very defensive, safe location that can allow you to annoy the enemy team. If you don't want to do that, then continue around this corner, and you can get fire out in this location occasionally to the west of the, to the east of the map, but not often, and it's not, they aren't great shots when you get them, mostly at hold down tanks. But... Of course, there's the alternate entrance to the Abbey that you can use once it clears up as well. So, it does get clear to you just how important the Abbey is on Abbey. And why shouldn't it be? It's named Abbey, for God's sake. So, gentlemen, that was the Abbey, and I've covered it for lights and mediums. Now, let's look at lights and mediums from, from other locations. So... Lights and mediums from the northern spawn. There's, there's really not anything else, you know? I'm, I'm just thinking about it now. I was thinking about saying go and spot on the 8-9 line. But really, that is pretty much useless. So, let's move on to medium tanks as a, as a class, specifically. So I don't have to cut out some medium tank only play. So that I can adhere to the lights and mediums. So, medium tanks from the northern spawn. One thing that you have to work out on the Abbey, do the enemy team have a lot of TDs? The 9-0, or the 8-9 line, is occupied. Is occupied heavily by TDs. There will be Yakanzas, there will be ISUs, there will be freaking Waffenschlägers. And even if you win that flank, you're still going to have to compete with the TDs that are hiding in the enemy base. So one thing that you want to consider, do the enemy have TDs? If not, it might be worth you making an aggressive medium tank play with a platoon probably down the 8-9 line. I do not recommend going here alone in a medium, but if you're in a wolf pack situation, then definitely go this way, clean up whatever you can. Okay, so what you're going to consider as well. And this is why I say this map is so heavily influenced by the Abbey. Whatever tank you're in here, in, did your team win the Abbey? If so, play aggressively on this flank and play to the inside corner. So what you want to do is make the engagement right here. You will be in line of fire the enemy RT, but the fire support that you get from the mediums in the middle, if you engage the enemy at about here, will be invaluable and significantly more than the enemy RT will be able to put out, generally speaking, as long as there's not like when you top tier RT, which does happen far too often. So make the engagement on the inside corner here if you have won the middle. If you have not won the middle, you have fewer options. One thing, you want to make the engagement as close to this hill as possible. You want to make it on the outside corner, because that will give you cover from the guys in the middle. You'll be able to go hold down here, this is a good position if your team have lost the middle, but you still want to make an engagement on the 8-9 line. So make sure that you're using this position, and you're really going to consider who's won the middle. It's the most important question you can ask yourself on Abbey. Now, once you've cleared this location, what you want to do on this map is clear up until a certain point on this line. So you clear up until you can peek around this corner and you don't see anything here. Because it gets it gets more and more linear. Now occasionally you'll have people going down hold down there. I once had a T110E3 going a hold down in that location and holding back three or four chunks on my team. Now I was in the chief for lightweight at the time. So I just went over here. Went over this land, right in the middle here. And I didn't drown. 
and I got 40 seconds left. I, I, I know, but I want to cover this in specific detail. 40 seconds left to cover this matter. Okay, fine. E, e. So, this position is remarkably useful for outplaying anyone who camps there. Because you hold down your harassing, they've got a focus frontal. If you can take their attention off of your guys there, your guys will push up and support you, and you can de out people there a lot easier with a person out on the flank than on it here. Now, I'm gonna continue this in the uh, in the next game because I've monologued for so long about this map that the uh, the game timer is about to run out. So gentlemen, I will see you there. Okay, gentlemen, hello, welcome back. We're gonna continue covering that same maneuver. I'll, 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 I'll take a position here as well. It's another way to hold down or get info on the 899, or maybe just to look cool. I don't know. Wait, have they blocked it off? God damn it, Wargaming. Used to be able to get up there and easily. Bastards have blocked the loot off. The changes they've made to this map, man. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's too easy to flip or get stuck? I've no clue. In any case, we were talking about the 899. Uh, for your info, you can no longer get onto the top of that hill so easily. Who knew? Um, so we just talked about outplaying people who use this location right here to hold back the 99. It's a very strong lo hold down location for certain tanks like an E3 for example, but you can outplay it by going out wide. Now. I was talking about clearing this flank up to a point. Because the thing about the 899 is it becomes easier and easier to defend the more you attack it. And that is because, not only because the enemy have a lot of time to see and react and fall back into a defensive location, it's not only because the enemy RT is going to be behind on this location, it's not only because the enemy TDs are going to relocate from their camping positions, defending the middle into these positions to shoot you as you come around the corner. It's because the enemy will fall back. The, the engagement gets more and more linear. You have less and less options. That is such a linear corner. You have one option and one option only there. And they, that is to go down the corner and get shot. Whereas here, you can go down here, you can go up there, you, you can do whatever. So I don't recommend attacking the 9 Zinger line in its entirety. What I recommend doing if you're attacking from the south is going up here. Get yourself a bit of info. Are there tanks in the middle that you can shoot from there? Is there something else that you can do other than pushing this, continuing to push this very linear engagement? Can you push, are two of your friendly tanks gonna push up there to that corner? In which case, can you use the distraction of those tanks to come straight over the middle and get under the enemy TDs here? Is the middle clear? Do you own the middle? Can you attack up to this location and kill the TD that's holding back your flank there? There's so much more that you can do from this position. Not only when attacking on that linear corner, you want to see what you can do from the middle here. Check out your options. Don't just blaze down the flank and thinking, okay, we're gonna attack this one single flank. Do the same if you're attacking from the from the north as well. Go up into this location, see what you can see. See what you can see in the enemy base. See what options you have. I mean, it's not so easy to get far onto these guys, but one thing that you can do is relocate to this position right here. You can go straight off here, careful not to flip. There we go. And if you get into this location... Eee, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, you get the idea. The idea here is that you can harass anyone who's uh, fallen back. For example, if your flank is continuing to attack from the 899, then your force is more than likely you're going to push back any uh, more defensive TDs. Let's say Jagdpanzer is holding out that flank. He wants to fall back to reload. But because you've relocated over the middle and your team are still pushing that linear area, you've now got a flanking bar onto the guy as he's trying to fall back from your team's pushing. It's always good to have more than one level of, of engagement. It's always good to have a guy on the team who's thinking, Okay, what else can we do here? What, what other options do we have? What is unexpected to the enemy? Now, you saw me hugging the wall here. That is obviously to get a defensive position from any TDs that might be there. You should be sure to be doing that as well. So, those are your options for the 9 line in its entirety, really. Um, let us talk about mediums. 
I think I covered mediums from the southern spawn on the Nine Zealand line as well because that that flank is pretty much entirely symmetrical. But now we're going to look at some secret spots and some cool areas that you can use on the one two line. So let's talk about mediums attacking from the south position now. This area, the 1-2 line, is split into two engagements. You've got high land and you've got low land. Now, as we know, it's always better to be in high land. So what you should ensure that you do, if you're not sure what engagement to make, if you have no idea what to do, take the high land. Let's say you're in an end game situation and you're 1v2 when you've got a uh, difficult situation, always take the high land. It is always better for you because uh, let's just do an example of why, for example, if I get ambushed right here by a 3090, I can turn around instantly and I can go hold down and I can get a shot off while he's closing distance to me here. He's going to be slower, he's coming uphill, it gives me more time to react to the situation. If I, if the same situation arises and I'm on the low ground, if I've chosen to take the low ground here, that 3090 is going to be on me. It's going to be coming downhill towards me, he's got the advantage, he can even fall back, I'd have to come uphill to him. It is always better to be above your enemy than below your enemy. So, Southern Spawn. Let's think about what you can do. So, your objective should always be to take the high land. Now, you will expose yourself to the enemy Archie, but it's kind of world of tanks, isn't it? So, in your high tier mediums, it can be useful to get out onto the flank here. Now, again, this is influenced by if you have won the middle. And this entire flank is influenced. This entire... Elevated position on the two line is influenced by whether your team have won the middle. You've got to consider, okay, if my team has won the middle, then it is actually pretty damn good if the enemy attack aggressively into this location. So I'm going to move up to here and I'm going to invite the enemy team to attack. I'm going to invite them to come into this location where they're going to get shot on the side. I'm even going to fall back down there because I know that I've won the middle. I'm going to invite them to attack on this flank because we've got supporting fire that we can consolidate from the middle to get an advantage on this flank before we spring a counter-attack when the enemy have incurred a lot of fire from the middle. Something worth doing as well. However, if you have not won the middle and you're attacking from the southern spawn or the northern spawn, it is very dangerous to be attacking on the elevated position on the two line because at various stages through here, you're going to incur flanking fire from the guys in the middle. So consider that as well. If you have won the middle, generally on Abbey, play more aggressive. If you haven't won the middle on Abbey, play more defensive. That's a very broad overview of how this map works. Now, you can get into this bush as well, but you've got to consider people advancing here. Do you think you're going to lose this flank? If so, don't use this position. It's probably overcommitting. But you can get shots into the middle from here, but it is dangerous and difficult to work. Alright, so let's say that you're on the south team and you've lost this flank, or you're lo losing the two line. There's a very nifty position that Peabody discovered earlier while we were investigating this map, which is right here. And this is a great position to use to hold down this flank. You're on the T-54. I wouldn't suggest the sense of one because it's just far too fat. But here, you're hold down. Now, enemy RT is going to be a problem. And also, layer of the land is going to be a problem. This is not modeled that brilliantly. So do be careful you don't expose your engine deck by reversing up here. Also a problem, top of the turret gets exposed if you reverse too much. So make sure you keep your position fairly steady and try and do this. Try and show the enemy your heavily angled upper plate and your chief 54. When you're not firing, so what you want to do is put out a shot and then do this. Angle your tank backwards. Don't show them your lower plate, but what that will do is enable you to hide the top of your target, which is generally a weak spot on the 140, on the 430, on, on the T-54. You can show them your auto bounce upper plate. This is a, a very strong location to hold back the enemy that are pushing down the two line because they have to work so hard to dig you, dig you out. It's a very, very powerful location. Even if you are not pushing out fire, 
get into a position like this can allow you to delay the combat here long enough for your middle force to push, long enough for your eastern force to push. It is certainly a, a position worth considering. Look at what Peabody has to do to try and kill me here. He's got pretty much no hope. Another thing, wiggle your chariot while you're here. Wiggle it up and down, make maneuvers left and right. Try and make the enemy waste as much time as possible. Obviously, you're on the back foot here. You're just trying to make a last ditch effort, a last stand. And if you have people around that corner, which is more than likely, the enemy simply, simply cannot dig you out without moving to here. And chances are you have people on that land as well. So if you have forces there, or forces that are going to fall back to there, and forces there, this position is just godlike. I mean, think about it. If Peabody wants to outplay me, he's going to go there. But if there's forces on that flank, he can't go there. And I'm going to be shooting him while he's there anyway. And if he wants to outplay me by coming right below me, then the guys on the flank behind me are just going to take him out before he gets there. Position is insanely powerful if you know how to use it. Now, let's talk about another very sneaky position to use for defending the southern cap that a lot of people do not know about. And it is very tricky to, to get to. It benefits from foresight benefits from you knowing how or, or and when the enemy is going to approach your cap. And if you get a run up, it should be significantly easier to take this position. Uh, 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 look at me failing on my map review. Okay, there we go. Okay, so in it, sneaky, nifty tank, stop stalling! Go! Go! Please don't make me look like a fool in my map review. Please. Please. Okay, so in a fast, sneaky, mobile tank, this position right here is that of a ninja. If you've got binos right here and you're in a light tank, you're going to be able to outspot the entirety, most of the enemy tanks. And the great thing is, everyone who's attacking the southern base loves they love to hide behind that lock because they know that you're going to defend from that location. But nope, you've got the jump on them by getting into this position, activating your binos, you spotted them, they're trying to hide behind that lock because they think I've been shot from there. And nope, I've shot plainly behind that lock from here. The enemy no longer has a place to hide in the cap circle. I can shoot basically the entirety of it. Fantastic position to defend your base. So something worth considering as well. You are unfortunately out of the under distance here from the northern base. Now I'm just going to try and get down here without blowing up and dying. Um, or, y you know, getting, getting stuck. Ah. <sighs> Okay, gentlemen, uh, don't do that. Um, don't do what I did. Um, I'm back in this position because I wanted to tell you it can also be used to defend the uh, two line. Now, again, this is influenced by whether you have won the middle or not. And one thing you do want to consider, flanking fire, right here. Those TDs, that ISU-152 that's in base, yeah, he's going to shoot you if you expose yourself on the top here. But I don't think you have to. I've not used this position often, but not here. Yeah, you got cover from the enemy TDs. This right here is a hell of a sneaky position. If you can get into it early enough, I don't know how practical it will be because it takes a little while to get here, but look, a wild Peabody. So I can just shoot. Yeah. Hooray, <laughs> violence. Okay, so yeah, that's, that's that position. I, ow. Okay, I forget where I was. Um, I think I covered mediums. That was uh, mediums from the southern base. So we're going to talk about mediums from the northern base. Let's look at what we can do. Alright, so mediums from the northern base don't tend to have the advantages that the southern base get. Um, for example, I mean... I'm not gonna, this map is fairly symmetrical, it, it's fairly well balanced, and in fact I do believe I've used a position back here 
in the in the not too not too distant patches, this position right here can be very very useful indeed for putting out harassing fire to the guys there. If you detect that the enemy is attacking from the uh, lower elevated land here, or even the higher elevated land here, this is a good position to hold back the enemy because the enemy had to commit so much to to shoot you. And what I recommend, if you're in a platoon of two, this is really a good maneuver, Get and you're losing, you're, you spawned up in the north, you're in a platoon of two, you've come to the one two line and you're losing. Okay, those are the criteria here for using this maneuver. You put one of you here, right? And this one is gonna attract some attention. And you put the other one subtly over here, up there, right? And now this, this is very important because what the enemy should do is yellow to, about, to kill the guy on the high ground. At that point, there's nothing that this guy in this location can do. Or is there? Because it, it demands a cooperation of the platoon mates. I'm trying to work my gun depression here. It's remarkably difficult. This land is not modelled as well as it should be. There we, you've got a dip here that just prevents you from going to hold down. Be aware of that. So, this position is not really designed to put out fire to the enemy that much. I mean, you can put out fire as they're advancing there. So, the two things that will happen, either they'll come down this way and they'll try and kill you, in which case, reverse back into this dip, and the guy up there can shoot them in the back constantly, and you have yourselves a nice little crossfire that will take a lot of health off the enemy team. Now, if the enemy team are smart and decide that they're going to push on the guy on the high ground, then what you should do is reverse behind here, and keep that guy on the high ground until the guys get to about here, and then... Tell that guy on the high ground to drop off onto that location. And what will happen? They'll jump off the cliff, they'll try and jump on him. And then you've got two people in the engagement right here. You can pop out from this location, start shooting in. The guy up the front has already got them to lose a load of health by trying to jump on him. And you've turned it into two of you on, on one of them, or however many of them are stupid enough to jump off. It's it's a versatile way to hold back the one-two line that not a lot of people consider. But as I said, works best in platoons. Those are basically your medium tank plays uh, on the one-two line, and they're the only they're the only ones that I can say without context of a game. Do this, do that, because yeah, for any other more detailed tactics, I really need context to say anything about them. Now, let us talk about heavies, about the brawlers, about the big. Fat, stupid heavy tanks. Okay, so heavy tanks, they have all different manners of versatility. Let's talk about your, your fairly heavy heavies. Let's imagine that you're in an E100, uh, Mouse, an IS-7, you know, all, all the tanks are cl classes are really heavy heavies. And we're talking about from the northern base here. Now, I can recommend going from the north. All the time, going, not from the north, sorry, going from the higher land. Because, obviously, it's always better to be on higher land, and if by some miracle, this flank loses before you even get here, maybe you're in a mouse or something, this flank loses before you even get here, you you would, let's say you get to there, when taking the low ground, you get to, you get further forward, you get to there before you realize you have to fall back. In a mouse, on the high ground, you're going to be able to get to there, where you're supporting fire from your RT and your GDs in base. If you're on the low ground, you, you're screwed. You get outflanked and die with no fire support whatsoever. It is always better to be on the higher ground. It allows you more versatility. It allows you more areas to relocate. It is easier to go down than it is to go up. It, it is a, it's a basic fact and a basic principle to learn. So, this area has, has, is very kind to multi-level engagements. Uh, and it's very hard to win because... The Northern team have an advantage in terms of their engagement here as a heavy. Because I can put one heavy here, I can put one heavy there, I can put one heavy there, and we've got a lot of options, and it's not until we attack basically onto their flank that they've got a multi-level engagement to work with, and even in that case, this land is a lot more open than the equivalent land in this area, the equivalent land over there, you can just go around the top here without exposing yourself at all around that land there. But you can't do that on this land. So, northern team have a slight advantage. But 
What can I say about the heavy tank engagement? Have you won the middle? If so, aggression. If you haven't, defensive. That's basic. It's Abbey tactics. You want to bear in mind these positions as well. They are good for going hold down. However, if there are enemy RT in the in the game, just do not use them. It, it's not worth it. The enemy RT love to shoot at people sitting behind here. Just don't use them. The enemy RT will non non you. They will have you for bloody breakfast. And plus, it's low ground. So unless you see a specific opportunity that dictates it, unless you see an ability to get behind the enemy in your high DBM tank, your conqueror, or something like that, then try and take the elevated position. Of course, that depends on whether you have the abbey or not. Do remember that. But if you can take the middle through whatever means, playing defensive, playing playing aggressive, it's a way to better design, to take the high ground. So that's basically all I have to say about the heavy tank engagement over here. And in this option, again, take the high ground. Never go land that way unless you're bored and one of them is dying. Always go to the high ground because if there's people around there, you can outplay them at any point. You want to dig out the guys there first because they are on the higher land. If you dig out the guys there, before you dig out the guys there, then you can kill the guys there without having incoming fire from the guys there. However, if you go around that corner and attack these guys, they're going to fall back into the line of fire of these guys. It's always better to kill the people on the high ground, because high ground is better. I'm going to say this again and again and again and again, because it is so important to note. Now, this position is quite often used. You want to be careful with this bush, because... It doesn't really work. These bushes, I, I, I've had problems with them in the past. So do be careful if you are trying to double bush here. I recommend acting as if you're spotted at all times because those bushes are pesky little buggers. Also, have you won the middle? Because if you haven't, using this open land, if there's someone smart, they're going to get onto that balcony and offer all the flanking fire in the world into your tank while you're here. So, let's talk about heavies on the nine line, shall we not? Let's get our little light tank butt over there. Now, again, as I covered before, the nine, nine line is important. It's important to consider whether the enemy have TDs. And you want to take the same mentality to it that you would, that I said about light tanks. Do not attack the, the nine line in its entirety. Clear it to a point get the biggest advantage that you can by killing the weak enemy forces that were there and then see what you can do from the middle position do not push around these corners they're too linear they're far too easy for good players like me to just get on the high ground and outplay you it it, it makes you an easy target pushing all the way down the nine line because the enemy can be expecting you whereas if you get up here you've got another line of engagement i'll cover this again if you have won the middle then take the inside engagement in your heavies. If you have not won the middle, take the outside engagement in your heavies. Because that will that will save your ass. It will absolutely save your ass. And again, this position can be used from this flank, but you've got to go kind of up this way. And do be aware, if you go too high, right here, you try and go hard down against these guys, you're going to get shot in the back in the middle. So, not only really a feasible position to use, unless you're in a mouse and there's only a cheating new one there. You, you get the idea. Con <sighs> I mean, not much more to say. TDs, consider when attacking the 9 -9. Make a judgement call before you even go here, and keep your eyes on the middle of the map at all times. Now, the only thing left to... the only class left to cover... is TDs. And TDs, as ever, I mean, I have had a lot of luck in, in my early game. Or well, that, that was luck comparative to my skill back then. I, I, I was not always very good at the game. I, I, I actually never had a below 50% win, win rate, but that is only because I platooned with my panzer a lot. Let's say you've got a Yag Panzer and there's no arty. It is not a bad position at all. Not a bad position. You can hold the enemy team back very well from there unless they start firing heat at you in which case you're screwed because wargaming if you want to take a more defensive location maybe you've got a ball sig or something 
bushes back here, bushes back there. You can easily fall back into a more defensive location. It's very good for your purposes. And exactly the same applies for TDs on the 9 line from the southern spawn as well. As we know, the 9 line is very, very symmetrical on this map. Now, TDs at the start are very viable as competition in the middle. They can have an influence in that engagement in the middle. By going to this bush right here, you can even do it in something that's not a TD. But do be aware that you want a very valuable tank here. If you've got a Jagdpanzer E100 on your team and he wants to come here, don't block him in a feckin' uh, in a STV-1. You know, get your most valuable tank here because you're only going to get one shot into those high tier mediums that are trying to take the middle. Now, that house does block some fire and a lot of the enemy team will know that. That's why I said earlier we push up close to the castle. Potentially a better position is here. It takes more time to get to it, but because you're not going to get a shot on the enemy until they've advanced very fine in the middle anyway, this is often a better position because you're going to take your shot and right through that wall there as the enemy advance. And right there is probably the best shot, the clearest shot. It's not obscured by trees. You get to aim carefully. You get to see the enemy coming by your team that has spotted from the hold down position here and are now getting hit by the arty. You get to compare and aim your shot a lot easier than you would from that location that is blocked by the foliage. So, do be sure to use that position. And the same is true of the southern position, that bush that I'm sure you all know about, to the left of the structure, I'm not sure what you would call it, the equivalent of that, on the other side as well. Now, your more aggressive TDs um, can play a lot more aggressively. I've seen Jagdpanzers and T120s in games with no Archie, and even in games with Archie. I have seen them going to go hold down behind these tank necks, and it does prevent, present a problem, because even one Jagdpanzer down here holding this position can basically lock off the entire engagement just down here, because no one, no one is going to push against the hold down Jagdpanzer back here. And do be aware, Something that's worth doing in your Yakanza is not staying, not staying close to the neck. You don't want to stay here because what that actually does is, I mean, this is ge basic geometry speaking here. It exposes kind of more of your hull. You want to go further and further back because if the enemy is at distance, that neck actually becomes bigger relative to you if if you can understand the concept that I'm trying to get out here if you're closer to an obstruction and an enemy is aiming from about there you being closer to it the the tank is bigger comparative now like you you have I think I'm talking out my ass I I think I, I think I've just screwed up and done it completely backwards yeah Okay, ignore everything that I said, but just reverse it. So stick close to the to the tank unless you're in a certain situation where you can get gunned. Make a judgment call. I don't, I don't know. I, I, what, what, why? Man, this is going terribly. <laughs> okay, I um <laughs> moving swiftly on. Those are basically your options for TDs. One last thing that I want to cover with TDs is this plain and simple fact. If you are still in... Oh my god! If you, if you are still in base, and a lot of TDs are when their flanks crumble, when the western flank crumbles, when the eastern flank crumbles, be aware of that. And to be honest, at that point, if you have lost the middle, there's more or less no chance of you winning the game because of that balcony position. But if you if you own the middle and you lose a flank, be sure to react to that. You know that you're probably going to have, if there's any good players on your team, they're going to get to the balcony and shoot in to give you fire support. But if you're seeing that the eastern flank is losing, the 8-9 line flank is losing, then get here in your TDs. Because you want to put a shot in very early as they come around that corner, then draw them into the line of fire, the guy that's camping there. Hopefully no one's smart enough to do what we did earlier and come over that way and shoot you in the side. But, 
but there's also a position if they are that you can use out here to harass the enemy as well. Now, requires a bit of gun depression and a bit of fiddling, but right here you can harass the enemy as well. Works better in a more mobile TD. Maybe a Waffen trying to get out of Panzer Fear or something could use that position very, very well. And you want to consider doing the same on the other side. There's there's a layer of the land that's very similar to that on the on the other side as well that can be used to adequately hold back an assault from the nine line as well. Um, one thing that I have not covered. Um, SPGs like to hide over this land here, just so we all know. Um, do be sure to climb this land because there's a little dip behind it that the SPGs like to hide in. The last thing I will cover in this map review is the position right here. And this land can be used very, very easily to defend the base. This area right here, this bushland is fantastic for making a defense of the northern base. However, you cannot spot from that location should the enemy be taking cover behind this knock, behind this foliage here. So it's always good to have a spotter here. If you know that you've got fire support from here, you're trying to defend your northern base, you've got medium tanks up there, then come down here, light up the enemy, and they'll be able to shoot in, assuming that they're not hiding behind the knock. And if they are, you can have them from here as well. And what I can recommend is, if they are hiding behind the knock, don't engage from here. Go all the way around, this is assuming that you've won the middle, which is unlikely because if you've won the middle and the guy in the middle is hiding behind that mark, then they're going to get killed from the middle anyway. But a better position to use is this land here. For one thing, the land is flatter, it's slightly easier to work your gun depression over here. And you just have better shots in general, I feel like, from this location. And plus, you've got the supporting fire of whoever remains on your team in the middle. Gentlemen, that has been my map review of Abbey. It is a complicated map and at the same time a very simple map. There are some complicated matches that I hope you guys try out and do. Do be sure to leave your results with them in the comments. I'd be interested to see what you get to work for you, what doesn't work for you. How, how does your playstyle on Abbey differ from mine? Do you worry about the middle so much? Uh, do you occupy other areas in the map? Is there something I missed? Let me know in the description. In the description? Good luck with that. Let me know in the comments down below. And this is a posi position I was talking about with TDs. Waffen uh, trying to get out of fear. Right here. Defending the nine line. Good show. Okay, gentlemen. So, I really hope you found it helpful. Thank you for your continued support as always. And, uh, farewell. Mm. Jingle! Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> uh, no. What? 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 At this moment, that he knew he fucked up. <laughs> 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 Can you stop scamping, please, killer?